Panic spread in the conference hall after the author, Salman Rushdie, was left lying flat down and being urgently treated after he was stabbed in the neck on stage in upstate New York as he was about to give a speech. Rushdie, who has been the subject of multiple death threats for decades, had just been introduced when eyewitnesses said the man stormed the stage and began hitting and stabbing him. This photo shows blood on his chair and the screen beside him after the incident occurred. A man uh, rushed from this audience up onto the stage uh, and started punching or stabbing. It wasn't quite clear, but there was clearly some sort of blood or red liquid going in many directions. Uh, a collective sigh of shock from the audience. In a statement, the police said that Rushdie had suffered an apparent stab wound to the neck and had been transported by helicopter to a local hospital. But Mr Rushdie has been vulnerable to such an attack for decades after Iran's supreme leader, the Ayatollah Khomeini, issued a fatwa or religious ruling calling for his followers to assassinate the author after the publication of his most controversial book, The Satanic Verses, in 1988. If you only defend free speech that conforms to your own moral framework. That's what is normally called censorship. Rushdie was born in India to a Muslim family and then became a British citizen living in the UK. But after the publication of the novel, he was forced to go into hiding under police protection for the best part of a decade. The novel had been immediately banned in India and led to widespread protests in Iran, Pakistan and the UK because it was considered blasphemous for insulting the Prophet Muhammad. In 1998, the then Iranian President Mohammad Khatami said his country no longer supported the call for Rushdie's killing, but the religious fatwa was never officially lifted and there remained a bounty on Mr Rushdie's head reportedly of more than $3 million. Decades after the fatwa, Mr Rushdie told Channel 4 News in 2018 that the world remains just as polarised. The divisions in society have not been this deep during my lifetime. You know, the, uh, the conflict about even about the nature of the real, you know, what do you believe to be true, um, has never been as extreme as it now is. Today, the New York governor gave an update on Mr. Rushdie's condition. He is alive. He has uh, been transported, airlifted to safety. But uh, here's an individual who has uh, spent decades uh, speaking truth to power, someone who's been out there um, unafraid, despite the threats that have followed him his entire adult life, it seems. Threats that for decades the controversial author Salman Rushdie has managed to avoid until today when a man entered a conference hall with no security checks and viciously attacked him on stage in broad daylight. While Richard Kallenberg was at that book event and saw the attack happening, he joins us now from Chautauqua. Thank you very much for joining us. It must have been very upsetting. Can you tell us what you saw? Oh, it was just terrific. I mean, my, uh, I was sitting next to my mother and my aunt and uh, probably a couple hundred feet away from the stage, Salman Rushdie came on. We were excited to hear him, him speak. And all of a sudden, this guy comes out of nowhere and, uh, and starts stabbing and punching uh, Salman Rushdie. And every, everyone was, was shocked and horrified. How long did it take for the, uh, the state police officer to intervene? Well, it all happened so fast, but there were... Uh, people rushed the stage. It was, uh, you know, good people wanted to uh, prevent any further damage from happening. So uh, individuals from the audience tackled the, uh, the attacker. And I would say, uh, you know, before not too long, the, the police arrived, but the police were not the first ones there. It was, it was individuals in the audience. I mean, that's astonishingly brave for people, given the man had a weapon uh, that he was using. Um, I mean, what kind of event was this? What were you expecting to hear? Well, Chautauqua is kind of this, this idyllic summer community where you hear speakers in the morning uh, give lectures and then in the evening they have a symphony. It's a very peaceful community. We thought we were going to hear uh, Salman Rushdie talk about the importance of free speech, uh, which, which uh, is 
you know, something that, that all the audience members share as a value. And instead we saw the unfolding of a, uh, you know, a, a, a vicious attack. Well, were there any kind of security measures in place? Did you have to go through metal detectors or bag searches or anything? Well, I think that's the other thing that was shocking a lot of people when we were talking afterwards. There, there was no, there were no metal detectors. There was, it was just, uh, you know, you, you buy a gate pass to go to the lecture and, and anyone could come in and, uh, and obviously the attacker saw this as a, as a soft target of sorts and so took advantage of it. Uh, Mr. Kallenberg, thank you very much indeed for joining us tonight. Well, the Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, said he was appalled that Sir Salman had been stabbed while exercising a right we should never cease to defend. Fellow authors, including J.K. Rowling, Stephen King and Neil Gaiman, have also expressed their shock and distress. Joining us now, the Indian Member of Parliament and acclaimed author himself, Shashi Tharoor. Your thoughts tonight, Shashi Tharoor? Well, I'm absolutely horrified, of course, that this has happened. I, I must say that 33 years after the fatwa and after the fatwa was officially withdrawn, it's not something that any of us expected to see happening. And, uh, I, I, you know, I just feel terribly for, for Salman because I still remember the first days when he was able to walk down the street in New York to have lunch with me, completely unaccompanied by security, and how much it meant to him. After nine years, essentially, uh, in isolation, hiding, uh, for him, that normalcy, that ability to just walk down the street meant so much. And the ability to go and stand on the stage and make a speech was something that over the last few years you must have been taking for granted. It, it really is, is deeply distressing what has happened. And it is an assault on freedom of expression. Uh, I might add it also does a great disservice to the Muslim community because this is going to reinforce the perception of, of uh, that, that many bigots will spread of Islam as a religion of intolerance and violence, which, of course, the perpetrator uh, will, have, will have reinforced with his actions today. Well, I mean, obviously, we don't know anything about this attacker at, at this stage, but it's interesting that you, I mean, you talk about the fatwa being withdrawn. It was never officially cancelled, was it? Well, the president of the Islamic Republic said that it was no longer in force, which I, I took as, as sufficient... Uh, a sufficient uh, uh, indication that it was no longer going to be an active life threat. Yes, and, and, and I, but I suppose from what you're saying is, and what he said to us actually just a couple of years ago, he, he lives his life as if that threat is history. That's right, and you know, we all crave a certain amount of normalcy, don't we? And, and I think he felt that after nine years of living and hiding and writing, with the constant threats uh, that as you go to bed, you don't know if you're gonna wake up the next morning. Uh, it, it, it was just wonderful to be normal again. And I'm sure that that's what's uh, uh, going to haunt all of us now is that that has ended for him. And perhaps in future, uh, any writer who attracts a certain kind of controversy um, will find it more difficult to be invited because organizers would suddenly need to take on an additional burden of, 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 of uh, security arrangements um, that may discourage them from offering platforms to writers. It becomes an extreme form of censorship, as Salman himself has often said. Yes. A death threat is indeed an extreme form of censorship. I mean, you say, you say this is an attack on free speech. You just wonder what, what kind of effect do you think this attack will have? Because, I mean, he, he, you know, he didn't shy away from... The topic, he still wrote about Islam and controversial issues throughout his life. Well, I think he felt rightly entitled to. He was born a Muslim, raised as one. He had views, he understood the issues. And, and I think he very often spoke uh, for uh, Muslims in Britain, for example, as a community, with a tremendous amount of passion and identification. Um, I, I don't see why he should feel that suddenly a death threat disqualified him from addressing issues he was otherwise in every respect qualified to address. Uh, this, I think, is something that, that writers face all the time. And of course, the irony, as I understand it, is that his speech at Chautauqua was actually supposed to be on freedom of expression, on, on creative expression. Yes. I might add, uh, if I may, that I've spoken at Chautauqua and it really isn't an easy place to set up uh, security arrangements because it's, it's rather open and people can just flock in um, and people do it. There's an almost a sort of picnic kind of atmosphere there. 
Um, and I, I can just see that it would have been difficult, perhaps, in a place like that to, to ensure foolproof security. Um, it, it is said in news, in, in, in news accounts that the attack uh, was over in a matter of 15 or 20 seconds. I don't know if that's accurate. Uh, but that's all it took, apparently, to do some very serious damage. Shashi Thoreau, thank you very much indeed for joining us tonight.